Hi everybody, my name is Andrea who wants to go over medical emergencies and what you have to know as a dental professional. So whether you're preparing for the board exam, you're still in school, let's, let's just go through some medical emergencies, make it a little bit exciting for you to learn this topic. At the end, we will also go through mock exam practice questions and case study scenarios to really see if you understand the material. So let me share my screen here. I have this slide prepared for my VIP board exam prep academy students. We are actually going through the medical emergencies emergency topic this week. So let's go through a couple slides and see how you guys do. So basically for medical emergencies, what you need to keep in mind is you need to be updating that stock, that medical emergency kit with the medications. It's basically like a briefcase type of kit where if there's a medical emergency, you are going to grab that quickly and bring it into the room. You need to know when they expire. There's, there's usually a log because not all medications expire every year. It could be every three years. It could be every six months. So you really have to double check that. And then what we're going to go through today is common emergency drugs, because this is the main thing that you guys really do have to know, and these drugs are going to be in your emergency kit in the dental office. So let's talk epinephrine. So what do you have to know about epinephrine? Think you have to know what it's used for and how do you give it? Is it a pill that's given under the tongue? Is it, you know, a liquid? No, this is for anaphylactic reactions. It's an injection. If somebody's going through a severe allergic allergic reaction, anaphylactic shock. It's not given if they're having an allergic reaction and it's a rash or maybe it's very minor or a skin condition, you wouldn't just inject this epinephrine for them. It's for severe anaphylactic reactions, which are life threatening. Nitroglycerin, this is one that is very important. So if a patient has experienced a heart attack before, they will likely have this. Anyway, it could be a pill that goes under their tongue. It could be a spray that goes under the tongue too. It's, it's used for the relief of angina. So that's chest pain. It's not a heart attack, but it can mimic and even feel like a heart attack. Or what if you have a patient who says they're having chest pains? They've never had this before. They don't know what's going on. They're super nervous for their dental appointment today. Are they having a heart attack? Maybe not. It could just be severe anxiety that's mimicking a heart attack known as angina. So you would give them a pill under the tongue or a, or a spray, whatever you have, wait five minutes, see if their symptoms improve. If not, give them another pill, another spray, whatever you have, but not both, either the pill or the spray and then see how things go. But if that still doesn't work, you can do it one more time, but only for 15 minutes. So that's three times. So five, 10, 15. Um, somebody would have likely called the emergency response already because if they're having a heart attack, they're going to need to go to the hospital. If they're not, and if the nitroglycerin helps them, it's still good to go to the hospital because it's not normal to be experiencing chest pains. So this is something that should definitely be in that emergency kit. What about aspirin? So aspirin is kind of like nitroglycerin, but not really, okay? So we just talked about somebody experiencing symptoms of a heart attack, but this is different. This is given just in case, you know, like you, you, you want to, if they're pretty sure they're having a heart attack, they're pretty sure they're having ch chest pains, they're going to the hospital, but nothing's alleviating alleviating their symptoms, even the nitroglycerin, you want to give them aspirin because this can actually inhibit the formation of a blood clot. So makes that heart attack less severe, if that makes sense. Aspirin is a good thing to have at home as well. Um, let's say I'm by myself, I'm experiencing chest pains, I'm pretty sure I'm having a heart attack, knock on wood, you know, um, I call the hospital, they need to come get me, I'm going to take an aspirin just to help to alleviate any symptoms or any damage that might be happening while I'm waiting for medical help to arrive. Let's go through one more and then we'll go through some mock exam practice questions for you because I know you're all excited. So let's go through albuterol. Um, this is that puffer to treat asthma attacks. It helps to open up the airway. Just so you know, some patients could be on a puffer every day as a preventative measure. So they, they might take this quickly in the morning just to help to open up their airway or they might only take one if they're experiencing an asthma attack. Some patients only take one after sports because that's when it seems to bring upon their symptoms or they might only need a puff of this once a month if they get really nervous but it's a good thing to have they need to have this they need to have this for them but let's say they come into the dental office and they forget their puffer well and then they experience it they experience an asthma attack then you need to have this in the emergency kit to give it to them 
let them know every time they use their puffer though they should be rinsing with water because that stuff will stick to the teeth and cause cavities so definitely a good thing to make note of so what do you guys think so far um we went through a little bit now if you want the full course i definitely have this inside my vip board exam prep academy where i help train people for the board exam tutor people to pass the board exam on their first attempt so we go through powerpoint slides like this for every single topic medical emergencies special needs pharmacology dental materials dental procedures we go through all of it i make the slides a lot more exciting so it's much easier to study than just say opening up your pharmacology textbook and learning about medical emergencies this is more exciting i try to use some fun colors for you so definitely check that out if you're interested but i did say i wanted to show you guys some mock practice questions so this is also inside the vip board exam prep academy where i give you here i will zoom out actually for you a full guide so your guide to medical emergencies so if you didn't want to read through those slides I give you a more summarized, well, maybe not summarized isn't the right word, but just easier to look at read if you don't want to look through slides or, or maybe you prefer to look at the slides versus the study guide. But what we're going to go through right now is at the end, oh, sorry guys, that was too zoomed in, are the mock exam practice questions as well as case studies. So would you guys like me to go through a couple with you here? Okay, I think we should. Let's do it. Whoops. I keep trying to zoom in and then it takes me all the way back. Let's just go through some of the easier ones. So, and definitely if you haven't yet, go on my Instagram at Dental L to see more questions because I do upload them every single week just to kind of help you guys study. So let's go through a couple questions and then case studies. So what is the primary use of epinephrine in dental emergencies? I feel like this is an easy one. Is it A, to control the bleeding for the treatment of anaphylactic reactions to relieve pain or for the treatment of hypoglycemia? Feel free to pause the video if you need to think about this, but I'm going to go through the answer with you. So it is for the treatment of anaphylactic reactions. We kind of just talked about that. Let's go through another question. Which of the following is not involved in the regular maintenance of an emergency equipment? This one's kind of harder. So is it testing equipment to be functional? Is it scheduling professional maintenance? Is it keeping a log of equipment usage? Or is it ensuring supplies are within their expiration date? So this is a harder one, you guys. So let's read the question. Which of the following is not a task involved in the regular maintenance of emergency equipment? And this one has to be explained a bit. So I'm, I'm just gonna go down to show you the answers and the rationale. So for every study guide, you get answers and also rationales. So the answer is C, to keep a log of equipment usage. So what is not involved in the regular maintenance of emergency equipment? The answer is to keep a log of equipment usage. You don't need to do that. So here is the rationale that I have given you. So while keeping a log of equipment usage is good practice for record keeping, which it is, and ensuring accountability, the tasks specifically mentioned for regular maintenance of emergency equipment include testing the functionality, scheduling professional maintenance, and ensuring that supplies are within their expiration dates. You want to do all of that, but you don't have to check the function of it because there's really you can't check the function of medications but I guess it's good for bookkeeping who's constantly using the medical emergency kit but that's it so see it's good to have the rationales because even if you got the answer wrong you might be thinking how did I get that answer wrong don't worry I help you with that do you guys want to go through a actually I don't want to show you guys the answer yet do you guys want to go through a case study let's do that let's just pick one let's do case study number three okay so let me move my picture or my photo video here so you guys can see what that says. So during a dental extraction, a 65 year old patient complains of chest pain radiating to her left arm. Even before you think of anything else, think through your studying, what could radiating to the left arm be? Left arm, chest pain, what's happening? Um, also accompanied by shortness of breath and a shortness of breath and sweating. The patient has a history of hypertension, but no known heart disease. The dental team suspects a cardiac event. So the question is, 
What actions should the dental team take in response to these symptoms? Is it A, pause the procedure, administer aspirin if no al allergies are present and call the a medical emergency medical service? Is it B, encourage the patient to take deep breaths and try to relax? Offer the patient water to drink and wait a few minutes to see if symptoms subside or provide nitroglycerin from the emergency kit without confirming a history of angina. That's tricky, isn't it? Think about it, you guys, while I go down to case study three, because I want to be able to show you guys the rationales in case it's something that you want to read on screen. So the answer is A, you want to pause the procedure, administer aspirin if no allergies are present and called EMS. So remember you guys, aspirin is a really good thing to give. So the rationale that I have given you is in the event of a suspected here, I will highlight that for you. In the event of suspected cardiac symptoms, immediate cessation of dental treatment, administration of aspirin, uh, provided there is no allergy and calling for an emergency services are critical steps. This approach aims to mitigate the severity of a potential heart attack while awaiting professional medical intervention. So makes sense, right, you guys? So this is all in the study guide. If you want to study more, if these short kind of videos you want more, definitely consider the VIP Board Exam Prep Academy because you will have a video of me going through that entire slide that I had shown you earlier. You get the full case study, sorry, not case study, you get the full study guide, which you can either print or save it digitally to your computer, tablet, phone, whatever, and you get the interactive classroom. So what the interactive classroom is, is I go through quizzes with you. There's fill in the blank. There's a collaboration board to ask questions. It's very interactive. Everything is learn at your own pace, so you can take your time, study what you want, when you want, but it's all there for you to log in whenever you want to study, and I am always here every day if you need me. Consider me your personal tutor. So let me know, you guys. Comment below if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed this medical emergency short lesson, and study more medical emergencies because there's lots for you to know. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you guys for watching. Or maybe. So are you thinking about becoming a mobile dental hygienist, meaning you're not going to work for a dentist anymore, you're not going to purchase your own standalone practice like a physical location, but you're either going to see patients in your own home, I can see patients in mine, I just have to quickly set up a couple things, or maybe...